Hi, Iz. Hi, thanks for that introduction. And you're so right about the interconnectedness of everything. I mean, we spend so much time on talk, focusing on the issues that are number one of importance to the UK. And, you know, I personally spend a huge amount of time, frankly, ranting about illegal immigration and, uh, you know, the mass movement of people and the loss of control of our borders. And often people who disagree with where I stand on immigration will point to what's going on in the rest of the world as a driving force for the displacement of people. And it's increasingly obvious that Nigeria is on the brink of becoming, well, first of all, it's on the brink of economic meltdown. Uh, there is social meltdown. We can go into a long list of the problems that it's facing. That has real potential repercussions for us here in the UK. First of all, we should care about Nigeria because of our historic links to the country. It's a Commonwealth country. There are very, very large numbers of Nigerians now living in the UK, nearly 300,000, so big diaspora. And what is happening there today? The utter, utter mess that country is in has big implications because I think we're likely to see an increasing number of Nigerians making their way as genuine refugees, not as economic opportunists, real refugees to the UK where they know that there are, uh, you know, they've got shared language, they will be welcomed. And of course, that has implications for our own ability to absorb yet more people. Yeah, I mean, what I, I think is worth pointing out as well, that when you look at Africa, when you look at the economic powerhouses, Nigeria is one of them. It dominates the economies of West Africa. Um, it is a huge oil producing nation as well. And like you said about our diaspora, when you look at the leadership contest in, uh, in the Conservative Party uh, taking place right now, there's a very good chance that actually the next leader of the Conservative Party will be a Nigerian by birth. Um, and this is a very important country. I've worked in Nigeria myself. I love Nigeria, actually. It has its problems, for sure. Um, and actually, those of us old enough to remember the Biafran War will know that when things go very wrong in Nigeria, they can go extremely wrong indeed. Nigeria, like most other African countries, has oftentimes been blighted by uh, inter-ethnic wars and, uh, and, and people who want to seek separatism and so on and so forth. But the situation had calmed down. There'd always been an agreement in Nigeria that uh, leadership was shared between a southerner with a deputy from the north and then that reversed and that is the way that Nigeria has managed to keep a hold on its uh, functionality for a long time but that model over the course of the last sort of decade or so has rather been eroded but but tell us what's going on today over there Isabel. Well, what's going on is that it's only fairly recently that Nigeria had presidential elections. So the incumbent, uh, Bola Tinubu, has only been in position since 2023. And unfortunately, having come to office on a platform of, you know, usual story, yes, I'm going to absolutely root out corruption, I'm going to improve the economy, I'm going to make everyday life easier for Nigerians has presided over making things quite demonstrably worse. It's been an absolute disaster with rocketing inflation. I mean, we think we've had a nightmare with inflation in our country. Currently, inflation in Nigeria is running at about 32.5%. Food inflation even higher, right up 37, 38%. That has actually left a lot of Nigerians quite literally starving. You know, when did you last hear about famine in Nigeria. Well, it's a real thing. Then there's a whole mess over Nigeria's fuel subsidy. Um, we, you talked earlier about Nigeria being very rich in resources. And here's the irony. You know, it has all this uh, oil and gas and unfortunately still doesn't seem to be able to provide it at an affordable rate for its own citizens. And the president removed the fuel subsidy, but didn't put any safety net in. And, you know, the, the, the fuel subsidy is extremely controversial. And there are many arguments for and against having it. But what you don't do is rip it away and then leave people without anything to turn to. So now you've got people who are un unable to afford to heat and light their homes. 
And among all of this, as a backdrop, you've got rampant corruption. I mean, if you, if you ask people in, in this country, what do you associate Nigeria with? Unfortunately, the answer you're likely to get is still going to be corruption. Well, that has just gone on steroids under this current administration. And also the persecution of journalists. And that is very, very sinister. That's ramped up under this administration. So poor Nigerian citizens, you know, they thought they've got a new regime, that things will get better. And in fact, here they are, you know, with a president who seems entrenched. And the question is, is there any is there any possibility of getting rid of him? Uh, he's supposedly at the moment on a working vacation uh, in London. Uh, that is sitting very badly with voters in Nigeria who feel, well, hang on a minute, your country's in flames and you've, you know, you've poodled off to the UK. We're not quite sure what you mean by a working vacation. But now, my friend, is no time to be on a holiday. So I think the sands are shifting. It's unclear when or if or how he might be displaced, kicked out, you know, made to step down in some way. But there's an awful lot of people hoping for change. Blimey, it's, uh, it's dreadful to hear that that is a situation that Nigeria is in. Isabel, thank you ever so much. It's brilliant uh, covering stories from all over the world. It's something I think we need to do more often.